Hey everybody, Vivian here with another tutorial that I've prepared for Sizzix using some of their very newest dyes uh, in conjunction with a variety of mixed media techniques, one of which I've been playing around with a lot lately and I'm really excited to share with you. Um, I want to talk to you briefly about the dye used to make this seed packet. It's the envelope seed packet designed by Eileen Hull for Sizzix. The code number is 658448, and it's, I really love this dye because, of course, it's good for seed packets and collecting seeds. I have a whole bunch of poppy seeds I need to collect. Um, you can see when you send it through the Big Shot, it scores those fold lines for you, which is very convenient. It's also really great for um, mini albums, little pockets and mini albums, and little pockets to hold um, pictures, poems. Um, they make perfect little gifts. So I cut this out of a piece of watercolor paper and I'm just going to spread some gesso on um, pretty randomly. Areas that are not gessoed are going to take media a lot more prominently. And um, once that's all gessoed, I'm just going to let it dry. Then I'm going to take some Distress ink. I like to start light and go dark just so I don't make any um, rash moves that I'm going to regret later. Um, so I started with the milled lavender, and as you can see, um, the areas that are not gessoed are going to take that pigment in a really uh, much more intense fashion. And um, because we were so random about the gesso, those shapes are um, natural looking and organic. I did it with the dusty concord as well, and because I wanted to go darker, and then I misted to create some interesting misted with water to create some interesting little splatters. It's a great thing about distress ink. Then I went over with some Lumiere paint. Um, Lumiere is manufactured by a company called Jacquard in a dark green. I came across a really fun color combination as, as I was working on a layout. This purple and green, I really love it. Um, so you want to have a dilute acrylic paint and the key is finding the right level of dilution. My last video on my YouTube channel also featured this. I wanted to share this with the Sizzic audience as well. I eyedroppered rubbing alcohol on top of that and let that dry to create some really natural looking circular shapes with a darker sort of nucleus. The key to making this effect work well for you is to dilute the paint with water just enough. You don't want it to be too thick or too thin. Um, but you know, you can play around in areas that have a more subtle effect. Those will be areas that you didn't dilute as much. Um, if you dilute too much, the rubbing alcohol will just go everywhere. Um, and I'm just moving some of that paint around with my fingertips to create some movement on my little mini canvas here. I think the effect is really cool, um, bold, and organic. Here's another dye that's new. It's made um, by, it's designed by Prima Marketing for Sizzix, and it's called Mariposa, and the code is 658530. I'm going to use the smaller butterfly in there with um, some seven gypsies papers that are, are very new. And I'm going to spritz them with um, uh, Lindy Stamp Gang, Bayou Boogie Gold, and a smooch spritz in Wineberry, I believe. Once those pieces are dry, this is what's really great about the die cuts. You can color each piece in a completely different color and you know, the, the shapes are, are cut so cleanly and nicely. And once you put them together, um, the effect is, is very bold and bright and graphic. Both of the dyes that I'm showcasing today are big dyes, the Eileen Hall dye and the Prima Marketing dye. And I love big dyes because they are just so sturdy and they keep on giving. So you have really sharp, crisp images that you can die cut from pattern papers or p almost white papers as I'm doing and color them in whatever colors you choose. Um, and you will 
over time just can keep getting really cleanly cut sharp images and these butterflies are, are very very pretty. I distressed these edges using a distress marker and I talked a little bit about this technique in my first video on my term as a design team member with Sizzix. So if you didn't catch that, you might want to go back to my channel, Contadina K on YouTube, to see that one. I wanted to lighten things up a little bit and gild this project. So I'm using some mica powders from Lindy's Stamp Gang. Um, this is the light golden color. And this came in my Scraps of Darkness kit. And I'm just sprinkling that on. I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water and rub it in um, to disperse some of the pigment in, in various places and add a nice golden sheen to this project so it'll really have a nice shine in the sun and in the light. I'm going to do some stamping. This is a cling stamp set from Hampton Art and Seven Gypsies and it's got some beautiful uh, creatures including this ladybug that is one of my favorites. And I'm stamping that with a solvent-based ink from Stays On. I'm going to go back over the score lines just a bit with a bone folder, um, just because um, we've been using so much media that it sort of warps the paper a little bit. I used watercolor paper just because exactly because of that, because I wanted to have a nice sturdy paper. And I folded it up and um, used a permanent adhesive. And here's the final project. So that um, alcohol resist technique adds a nice grungy organic look to the project, which I'm really excited about. I added a few self-adhesive pearls and gems and here are the final shots of the seed packet. So this itself would be a great gift, I think. Um, it's a very, very small canvas, so um, it's not an overwhelming task to create a little piece of art for somebody you love. Um, inside you could put a poem, you could put a picture, you could put a little card, you could put this into a mini album and um, have some pull-out journaling or pull-out photos. I think it's a really great die to have. The big die is so sturdy, it will last you forever. This is an envelope type of shape. So you could use it, although this one is mixed media and very grunge on the crafty spectrum, you could use it if you were a clean and simple style designer, um, vintage designer, um, shabby chic designer. It would just suit any crafting style and is very practical investment. So if you haven't got enough inspiration, please visit me on my blog. That's www.contadinak.com. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching and see you back here soon. Bye.